توبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون I know that we have one very patient brother who is a non-Muslim and he waited this entire talk to ask his question so at this time I will go to the front mic in the males section and ask the brother to please state your name, your occupation, and then briefly state your question. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Aditya, and I'm doing my final year engineering in Chennai. Um, though I'm a Hindu, I have been having this uh, question about Islam that I wanted to ask, and no better a person than Dr. Zakir Naik. Uh, as you said in your speak many times, the Holy Quran was written 1400 years ago and is considered the most worthy and the latest revelation given by Allah. So I have two questions to you. Allah, who knows all, why didn't he give his best of revelation the first time itself to the first of messengers? And why did God take so many times to give his best of knowledge? And my second question which is related to this is, even before the Holy Quran was written, that is 1400 years ago, human beings had lived in the earth for thousands of years. So why did Allah the most merciful didn't give them that best knowledge which he has given us for the last 1400 years? Thank you. The brother asked a very good question, very relevant question. Two questions, both the questions overlapping the answers. He said that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this last and final revelation 1400 years ago? Why not in day one when you mean me are there? And second part, which is a part of the same question, that what about the people who lived before 14 years ago? They were deprived of the Quran. So if Allah is most merciful, most gracious, most beneficent, so isn't it that the people earlier before 14 years were deprived? Very good question. To reply a question, my son, he tells me that, Abba, father, you want me to become a doctor? Why do you want me nursery? first standard, second standard, then school, then college. Why don't you put me into medical college directly? If I want my son to become a medical doctor, I don't have to put him into the medical college directly. I have to first make the grounds very clear. First he goes into the pre-primary school, then goes into the school, first standard onwards on past his school, then goes to the higher school, then college, and when he's fit, then he enters the medical college. Similarly, Almighty God, who has knowledge of the unseen, has knowledge of everything, he even has knowledge of the human beings. So, it is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Rad, chapter number 13, verse number 38, Allah says, kitab, that we have sent a revelation in every age, in every period. By name, four are mentioned in the Quran, Torah, Zabur, Injil, and the Quran. But there were several revelations sent. The first revelation, Almighty God knew that the human being had to develop. If he would have revealed the Quran at the first time, at the time of Adam, peace be upon him, he knew the human being won't be able to grasp it. That is the reason in the revelation that came before the Quran, that is the Injil. Today we have the Bible, though we don't consider the Bible to be the Injil, but some parts of the Bible may be the Word of God. It's mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of John. Chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall show you the way to come. He shall glorify me. So here, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he knew, but yet he said that you will not be able to grasp it. Therefore, when the last and final messenger will come, he will show you things to come. So similarly, Almighty God, he knew very well that when is the right time, for the human beings to receive the last and final revelation of the Quran and that was about 1400 years ago. As far as the second part of the question is concerned, what about the people that came before the Quran was revealed? I will tell them that if my son goes to standard one, he will not be given the medical question paper. He will be given the question paper of standard one. If he goes to higher school, he will be given the question of higher school. Then junior college, fine. So similarly, the basic message of Almighty God in all the scriptures, 
in all the revelations from the first revelation till the last revelation Quran was the same that you have to believe in one God that you have to worship him and no one else so all the messengers right from the first messenger Adam peace be upon him right down to Noah Abraham Moses Jesus Muhammad peace be upon them all all of them taught the basic message of oneness of God and about Tawheed and about this message of oneness of God and Tawheed inshallah I'll be discussing in detail on the last day of this conference on the last Sunday that the 20th of January inshallah hope that answers the question it is given by Almighty good evening again everyone uh, it was amazing to see how much uh, science that the glorious Quran contain after your talk but in most of the examples from the Quran which you gave it is very difficult to comprehend what the Quran tells before actually the science discovers or invents that particular phenomenon for example you said in the honey there is healing of humanity in the Quran and you mentioned it as it's about if a person is maybe say poisoned with a plant the honey of the plant should be taken so what is the use say of a almighty holy scripture talking about things which you are only able to comprehend after the real invention is made by science so can you tell me now something from the Quran which will be invented by science later or yet to be invented Brother, that's a very good question that I've mentioned many things about science indirectly saying all this was already discovered earlier and if Quran says something and after science has discovered so what's the use can you tell me something which science hasn't discovered brother that's the reason the Arabs who advanced in the field of astronomy why because they read the Quran the Quran has a lot of information on astronomy so when they read the Quran they try and do more investigation they do more research and that's how they come to know Quran is a telegraphic message See the book of science only on one subject in medicine one subject only requires volumes so if that way the Quran is this Quran most of the human beings they don't like to read oh such a big book so if God Almighty wrote in detail then even a big building you will require thousands of buildings to contain the message of the Quran Quran is telegraphic message so in telegraphic message many of the Muslims they read the Quran and they made advances in science that's the reason we find if you go back into history the Muslims advanced in science and technology but you pose the question forget about the past what about today all what I've mentioned has been discovered earlier but many of them were discovered by Muslims some by non-Muslims some by Europeans what about things which science hasn't discovered fine first I'll tell you those things which science hasn't established but yet there are high chances which Quran has testified and I believe in it for example Quran says in Surah Shura chapter number 42 verse number 29 that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the creatures in the heavens and the earth and has placed creatures in them so Quran says there is life besides this earth today science hasn't proved there is life besides this earth scientists say there are high possibilities that life will be there beside this earth so they are sending rockets spaceships moon Mars Quran says there's life beside this earth I believe in it science may discover it tomorrow after five years after ten years after 100 years Quran says I believe in it today there are many hypotheses how the world will end it says that the Sun will become big and the world will end the mountains will fall down the mountains will become smooth the ocean will swell up the world will enter into a black hole many hypotheses many of these hypotheses not all they match with the Quran Quran says in Surah Qiyamah chapter number 75 verse number 8 and 9 that the Sun and the moon they will join together the Sun will be buried in darkness if it's Surah Takhvir chapter number 81 verse number 1 2 and 3 it says that the stars will fall down and lose their luster the mountains will fall down to utter ruin the ocean will swell up it's mentioned in Surah Infitar chapter number 82 verse number 1 and 2 and 3 again the ocean will swell up the stars will fall down similar to many of the hypotheses but Quran says I believe in it Quran further says in Surah Ambiya chapter number 21 verse number 104 we have created this creation we will destroy it and create a new creation science hasn't discovered that yet Quran speaks about life after death science hasn't proved that yet 
Quran speaks about heaven and hell. Science hasn't proved about that. Quran speaks about jinn. Today, psychologists say extraterrestrial power. There are some people who get possessed with jinns. Quran speaks about that. Quran speaks the first man on the earth was well, Adam, peace be upon him. Science hasn't proved. There are high possibilities science will prove. Now, you may ask me, that brother Zakir, you gave such a good talk on science and technology with 100% solid proof. You believe in life after death? You believe in jinn? You believe in heaven and hell? You a doctor? Isn't this unscientific? I said, no brother. I believe that it is scientific. Suppose whatever the Quran has mentioned, 80% has proved to be 100% correct. I spoke about astronomy, about geology, water cycle, oceanography, botany, biology, zoology. So just hypothetically, 80% what the Quran has mentioned, suppose, has been proved to be 100% correct. The remaining 20% is ambiguous. Neither right, neither wrong. Not even 0.1% of that 20% which is ambiguous has been proved to be wrong. There is not a single verse of the Quran which can be proved false by established science. Hypothesis. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct and the remaining 20% is ambiguous, but not even 0.1% of that 20% is proved wrong. So my logic says that even that 20% inshallah will be correct. If not today, tomorrow, after 50 years, after 100 years, after 1000 years, Allah Alam, God knows, they will prove there is life after death. They will prove there is jinn. They will prove there is hell. There is proof there is heaven and so on and so forth. I can give another lecture on things which science hasn't proved, but inshallah will prove. Hope that answers the question.